Coming up, the Bird family explores a shipwreck and meets a hungry stingray. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. I love diving all over the world. Cold water, warm water, fresh water, and salt water. But I have to admit, Sometimes I really want that nice, warm, blue tropical destination with great visibility and cool stuff to see. There are lots of places that fit that description, and today we're visiting one you may not know about, the hidden gem of Porto Santo, Portugal. The adventure begins on the beautiful island of Madeira. Although Madeira is part of Portugal, it's located less than 400 miles off the coast of Africa in the Eastern Atlantic Ocean. Christine, Elise, Liam and I have ventured to Porto Santo, the northernmost island of the archipelago of Madeira. It's a warm, dry island famous for one of the best beaches in Europe and surrounded by crystal clear tropical water. Our day begins when we're picked up by Miguel Matos in the Rea Dive van for a ride from the hotel to the shop. Soon we disembark at Rea Dive Center, a full service dive shop located right on the breakwater. Nelson gives us a short briefing on today's dive sites. This will include a popular wreck known as the Madeirance. For almost 50 years, the Madeirance cargo ship made runs between Lisbon, Madeira, and Porto Santo, carrying everything from food to vehicles. In 1998, she made her last trip and was sunk as an artificial reef in 2000. The wreck is now broken into two pieces, with the bow and the stern laying right next to each other. Next, we start assembling our gear. Since the wreck is down around 30 meters deep, we need to analyze the nitrox. Next, we load all the gear onto a trailer. And while we walk to the boat with the cameras, the gear goes in style. To our surprise, the boat is particularly spacious. I can get used to this. Miguel fires up the twin outboards and we're off. This dive site is only five minutes outside the harbor. We tie off to the mooring line and it's time for a dive briefing. Finally, it's time to dive. That was very bad. They're so slow. Oh. 
We sink down into the crystal clear water and immediately see the ship. After more than 20 years underwater, the deck plates have holes in them where rust has taken over. An incredible school of two-banded sea bream is hanging around the portside lifeboat davit. It's fun to swim through the second deck of the stern and imagine what the ship felt like when it was still afloat. Liam leads the way with his mom in pursuit. Then we turn and cruise down the port side walkway. Turning to look inside one of the hatches, I can see what Miguel was telling us. The wreck is starting to collapse, so going inside is dangerous. We decide to stay outside the wreck. We investigate a furious frenzy of fish activity. A mixed group of wrasses are raiding the nest of another fish and eating its eggs. Next, we decide to swim over to the bow and check that out. The visibility is so good that the bow doesn't look that big. But when we swim all the way out to the very front, we realize just how big it really is. Christine drops down to check out a porthole. Then we start making our way back towards the stern. We find a Madeira scorpion fish which is actually found all over the eastern tropical Atlantic and the Mediterranean Sea. Like all scorpion fish, it has venomous dorsal spines, but it has no interest in stinging anyone. Nearby, the wrasses are harassing yet another fish's egg nest. Back at the stern, we can see how the top deck is collapsing. We swim along the starboard walkway and then back into the stern deck area. It's hard to explain why swimming around in a three-dimensional playground like this is so fun, but it brings out the kid in everyone, even medical doctor moms. I dreamed about doing stuff like this when I was Liam's age. I mean, I'm not saying he's spoiled or anything, but I mean, he's, I mean, he kind of is. As we are nearly a hundred feet down, we soon have to depart the wreck and head back towards the boat. Mm -hmm. 
Liam stows his GoPro so he has both hands available for the mooring line. We rise slowly and safely. During a surface interval, we give our bodies time to off-gas excess nitrogen, and Miguel moves the boat to a new site, close to Sima Island, an uninhabited rock that looks small on the map, but not so small compared to our boat. We're diving a site called Cabiso de Pollo, right near the island. Yahoo! I think it's crooked. Clasp. Very good. We hit the water and follow Miguel down. We follow a channel in the rocks that leads to a school of fish. And they're beckoning us further. Out on the rubbly seafloor, I see tufts of algae. Miguel told us that this is new. They used to have millions of sea urchins that ate the algae, but a disease has wiped out the sea urchin population and the algae is going crazy. As if out of nowhere, all of a sudden a stingray appears. She is hunting using her keen electrosensory system. Like a living metal detector, the stingray has tiny pores on the underside of her head that can detect the faintest electrical current created by living things, even when they're buried a few inches in the sand. I watch as the stingray carefully homes in on something hiding in the seafloor. And when she knows she's found something, the stingray starts working to extricate her meal. like she got something. Once she swallows the meal, whatever it was, she turns and swims off. I follow behind to see what she might do next. All of a sudden, she turns and makes a beeline right to Christine. It's possible that she got a strong electrical signal from Christine's camera and went right over to investigate. Then she swims away. We leisurely make our way back to the boat. That awesome stingray encounter made our dive. In a single day of diving, we experienced a magnificent shipwreck, terrific animal behavior, and warm, crystal clear water. Scuba diving doesn't get much better than this. Porto Santo really is an awesome corner of the blue world. Hey guys, if you want to learn more about diving in Portugal, check out PortugalDive.com. They're the Portugal diving experts. <laughs> <laughs>